than we do. Uh, I'm going to go. I'll go down hard though. I'll well, fight it right to the bitter end. Yeah, but I, I don't think they're going to go down at all at the end of the day. Well, we'll see. Three, we're three weeks from trial. Yeah. I mean, uh, I may have to appeal to the big man because I got it's the District of Columbia. We surveyed 120 jurors. 90 of them know who I am, and they hate my guts. Voluntarily. I don't think the big guy can let you go. Oh, this is so the Washington Post revealing some new communications between Matt Gates and Roger Stone back in 2019 when they were standing behind backstage before a Trump event somewhere. And as you heard, Roger Stone was concerned about potentially going down. Going down for what? You guys remember what Roger Stone was up to, but also the fact that he received a pardon. We're gonna to get to all those details on that. But back in 2016, he had lied to Congress to save Trump's ass from the 2016 WikiLeaks release of emails from DNC and Hillary's campaign. In case you guys forgot about that. During this previously unreleased recording, Stone discussed his legal woes, hoping to be let off the hook by the big man. Wonder who that could be, letting off the hook by the big man for crimes that you committed after you lied to Congress for the President of the United States. Anyway, goes, this nefarious conversation was not just a one level that you heard there, it went further because. Uh, uh, Matt Gates then wanted to reassure Roger Stone, you know, criminals like us don't get punished in the United States of America. Let's watch. Well, we shall see. I went forward that you could bet. There he tried that. Huh? And, and, and. Oh, the boss still has a very favorable. He sends that message from time to time. He knows what it would have been easy to make this go away, but I couldn't live with myself. These guys watch too many mob movies. This is like Goodfellas or something, right? You hear those terms of Jackson? So I would I I wrote them down. He goes, the boss still has a very very favorable view of you. That's what Matt Gates said. Big yeah, yeah, the boss. <laughs> Even that one is the boss. The first boss. time it was a big guy. Now it's the boss. And then Roger the Stone, <laughs> in response, says he sends that message from time to time. What are we talking about? Cryptic messages from the boss and the big man because he still has a very favorable view of you, and he might not off you yet. You're yeah. gonna do big time. Come on, bro. Well, my, well, my thing with this is these these are the worst criminals ever. And really, it's just because they're too privileged to be careful or crafty. Like, why are you having Absolutely. these types of discussions in these types of places? I mean, it's basically like going to the police precinct and discussing the, you know, <laughs> all the hundreds of pounds of whatever it is that you sell that you have trafficking around the country. I mean, I, I, even when I was involved in things, whatever, I was just a mid-level drug dealer, and I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's just things you don't do. And it's like these guys are at the top of society, basically openly discussing treason, you know, and it, and it just, it, it's like, but you know, at the end of the day, um, unfortunately, elites always have, and no matter what we do, always will get away with the most, which is why it's important to make a system where we can hold people accountable. Because even though the powerful will always be able to get away with the most, that's why we're in this political game, so that we can create a system that's more just for people who have that power. But people these that guys talk are clowns. Like, yeah, and clowns that talk like this obviously are getting the best end of this system. It's why they have no problem with it. When people do complain about, when people do point out the inefficiencies and the biases within the system, they're like, what are you talking about? We can talk about crimes openly and honestly, and then afterwards nothing happens to us. As a matter of fact, Matt Gates kind of thought that for a second, and he revealed even further the nefarious, uh, the nefarious uh, uh, aspects of these conversations that they're having. Watch this and listen to the way Matt Gates describes what he doesn't want to say and how he doesn't want to say it. Well, we saw the skinny redactions. There was, you know, there was a lot on mute that was in the full redact that, that came out in the skinny redact. Yeah. Again, like. No, so it's it's. But they're gonna do you because you're not gonna have a defense. Correct. People need a scalp to justify. Correct. Correct. So if I need a pardon, I'm gonna be counting on you and dozens of others. Since there are many, many recording devices around right now, no, I, I have a, I have not feel the permission to speak freely about the I have about the work I've already done on that subject. I have no. Open and shut. Okay. 
in case you missed it, Roger Stone says, I'm gonna have to depend on you and many and, and dozens others to get me off the hook. To which Matt Gates says, I don't wanna talk too much about it cuz there's recording devices around. But I can talk about how much work I've done on that subject. I've been working on getting you this pardon for lying to Congress for the president. I've been working on it. An elected official or Republican congressman is talking about the work he's done. Is he talking about the work he's doing with legislation? Is he talking about work we're doing with helping people out of bad situations? Or is he complaining about those things, blaming it on, on other politicians? And then going and talking to his buddy and the president at the time, again, this is back in 2019, about the work he's done to get Roger Stone out of, out of uh, the legal issues with the president. Well, of course, if we want to talk about the work he's done, we have to look at the work he just did where he voted against, you know, basically protecting victims of sex trafficking. I wonder what that may, you know, what that may have to do with kind of similar to when OJ wrote that book, like, had I killed my ex wife, this is how I would have gone about doing it. So, you know, if we want to talk about the type of legislative work that Matt Gates has done, that's a good example. Well, again, as you point out how the system works a certain way, let's go down to graphic number four, because this is the result. After all of those worries and plans and work that you're doing behind the scenes that you can't talk about. Stone was convicted on seven felony counts that November and sentenced to 40 months in prison. But Trump, who publicly praised Stone for not flipping on him, he used the term flipping on him, <laughs> commuted his sentence. Uh, before it began and eventually pardoned him. So I, I guess the plans worked. I guess the loyalty to the big man, the boss, it worked out for you. But as we see these recordings come out and we may talk about it, heads explode, people tweet about it and we complain and then MSNBC goes crazy. What are we gonna do about it? What is the system now gonna do? Nothing else has happened as far as us exposing how biased and privileged the system is for certain folks. But what are we gonna do about it? We've exposed how police generally target certain groups and treat them differently when it comes to crimes or non-crimes or holding a gun or not holding a gun or holding a phone versus a bottle. None of that makes a difference until we do something about it. What are we gonna do about it? It's the last question we have to ask, whether or not you still trust these guys and afterwards, what do we do about it? That's the question we're gonna ask after these all the crimes of Donald Trump on January 6th finished being exposed. What are we gonna do about it? That's the question for the United States. Uh, if, if we can let cr criminals run free, then we just might start uh, inspiring others, which we've already done.